So for those of you unaware, CPAC took place over the weekend and it was, I think, probably more unhinged than it usually is. Like to say that people gave bizarre speeches where they said really stupid things. That's just kind of what we expect from CPAC. But I mean, it, it really, it, this year, more so than other years, I think, it demonstrates how crazy the Republican Party has gotten. And there were a lot of really bizarre moments, a lot of compilations that I could put together, but I'm going to focus on the leader of the Republican Party's speech, Donald Trump, because he returned and his speech was uh, exactly like his other speeches. He did not get new material. He said the same exact thing. And this wasn't necessarily a conference for conservatism. Rather, it was a church, if you will, intended to worship Donald Trump, as evidenced by this literal golden statue of Donald Trump that people took pictures by. So this is a cult. This is a pro-Trump cult. This is not about the conservative ideology. This was a conference about the future of Donald Trump's Republican Party. Now, there were a couple of moments that stood out to me when he made a speech, even though it was pretty mundane and, and dull. You know, he said everything that Trump supporters wanted him to say. He played the greatest hits. Um, but unsurprisingly, he still is reciting the lie that he won this last election. We won the election twice. I mean, you know, think about it. Twice. This lie literally incited a violent insurrection, and he's still saying it. So he is completely irresponsible. He doesn't care at all. Like, him saying this got him impeached. Not convicted, but it got him impeached. And he's still saying it. Not necessarily surprising, but it still is disgusting. And even if he's not president any longer, I don't think he should get a pass for lying about democracy, especially if it has very dangerous ramifications. Now, one thing that he said, it stood out to me. It was really interesting because this was actually a little bit surprising. He shot down this idea that he's starting a brand new party. We're not starting new parties. You know, they kept saying... He's going to start a brand new party. We have the Republican Party. It's going to unite and be stronger than ever before. I am not starting a new party. That was fake news. Fake news. No. Wouldn't that be brilliant? Let's start a new party and let's divide our vote so that you can never win. No, we're not interested in that. That is actually interesting to me. I didn't think he'd be aware about the repercussions of him starting a new party, because obviously, at least in the short term, that would split the conservative votes and lead to more Democratic Party victories. So I feel like he didn't like come to this conclusion, even though it's pretty obvious on his own accord. I feel like somebody told him that this would be the result because he doesn't like the Republican Party. And in uh, more clips I'm going to show you, he takes aim at people in the Republican Party. So I think it's evident that he wants to start something new, but he probably also realizes that you don't have to start a new party to be the leader of a party. Even if you're not the president, you are still in control of the Republican Party. Now, take a look at what he said when he heavily hinted that uh, or what happened when he heavily hinted that he'd be running again in 2024. The crowd absolutely went wild. But who knows? Who knows? I may even decide to beat them for a third time, okay? Beat them for a third time. With your help, we will take back the House, we will win the Senate, and then a Republican president will make a triumphant return to the White House. And I wonder who that will be. I wonder who that will be. They still love him. This is still Donald Trump's party. CPAC proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Republican Party is the Patriot Party. The Republican Party is Donald Trump's party. Now, if you look at a straw poll from CPAC, Donald Trump gets more than 50 percent 
of the Republican Party base, at least of attendees there, but other polls show him doing even better. And then in second, you have someone like Ron DeSantis. So anyone who even has a shot at maybe possibly challenging Donald Trump, it's because they're Trump sycophants. So this party, beyond a shadow of a doubt, is Donald Trump's party. Now, will he run again? I think he made it pretty clear that he's going to run again. He heavily hinted at it, but didn't commit. And I, I think that he knows if he formally announces a run, then that that raises some issues there. You can't coordinate with your super PAC once you've announced because that's illegal. So uh, not that Donald Trump cares about breaking the law, but he's not going to make it official just yet. But he's going to run in 2024. And I think this is uh, this is shitty. This is why he should have been convicted in the Senate, because the impact that he has on political discourse is, is terrible. He, he's toxic. He's divisive. Uh, he in this last year showed that he's a full full blown authoritarian. He would have stolen this last election from Joe Biden had he been able to actually do that, had he gotten enough Republicans in state parties across the country to actually do his bidding. Like, this is an individual who pressured the Georgia Secretary of State to just find the votes needed for him to steal that state. Like, this is an authoritarian. So the fact that he's running again, needless to say, this doesn't bode well for the health and longevity of our democracy. Um, and I love how he throws in there, I may decide to beat the Democrats for a third time. Like, he's just, he, he's incapable of, of admitting that he lost. And again, this, uh, going back to like the third party issue, the things that he says about Senate Republicans, like he takes aim at them and attacks them, like the, the response that he garnered by attacking Republicans from that crowd, it shows why making a third party, if you're Donald Trump, it's not even necessary because the Republican Party, this is your party. This isn't just your party. This is your cult. So take a look at what he said about some Republicans. Democrats don't have grandstanders like Mitt Romney, Little Ben Sass, Richard Burr, Bill Cassidy, Susan Collins, Lisa Murkowski, Pat Toomey. And in the House, Tom Rice, South Carolina, Adam Kinzinger, Dan Newhouse, Anthony Gonzalez, that's another beauty, Fred Upton, Jamie Herrera Butler, Peter Meyer, John Katko, David Valadeo, and of course, the warmonger, a person that loves seeing our troops fighting, Liz Cheney. How about that? <laughs> the good news is, in her state, she's been censured, and in her state, her poll numbers have dropped faster than any human being I've ever seen. So hopefully, they'll get rid of her with the next election. Get rid of them all. It is hilariously ironic to me that he's calling Liz Cheney a warmonger. He's right about that. No doubt. She is a warmonger. Her dad should be in prison for the rest of his life. She's a warmonger. But I mean, Donald Trump isn't necessarily the correct messenger for this because he himself is a warmonger. You ramped up drones in the Middle East and North Africa more than 400%. You were talked out of bombing Iran by Tucker Carlson, reportedly, of all people. You bombed Syria like Joe Biden multiple times. So to suggest that you're not a warmonger is laughable. It's absolutely laughable. Now, um, in terms of him attacking Republicans, I will say that I absolutely welcome the Republican Party infighting because this is a good thing. I want them to go after each other because the Democratic Party has been at odds with each other. You know, the left and the progressive wing against the establishment centrist wing for quite some time now. So, you know, Republicans have benef benefited from them being relatively united. So if Donald Trump is taking aim at some Republicans... I like this. You know, he's drawing a line in the sand. And the thing about Republican Party infighting is that unlike the Democratic side, there is a clear winner here. Donald Trump is already the winner because you can see the way that he is able to garner a response when he attacks Senate Republicans. And guess what? This is my favorite, uh, genuinely my favorite moment from the entire speech that he gave. And I'm saying this unironically because he attacks a Republican, um, not necessarily in a really like sharp way, but he, he cites a Republican and look at the way that the crowd responded. They booed this particular Republican. I'm of course talking about Mitch McConnell, probably the most effective Republican party lawmaker in recent history. Um, because Donald Trump doesn't like him, they don't like him as well. My endorsement of Mitch McConnell at his request. It's all right. It's 
It's all right. Now, he made a request. He asked for my endorsement. Brought him from one point down to 20 points up, and he won his race in the great state and actually the great commonwealth of Kentucky. And he won it, and he won it very easily. And I said, I wonder if I'm doing the right thing here. But you know what? I did, I did what I did. But he went from one point down to 20 points up very quickly, immediately, actually. Hearing Republicans boo Mitch McConnell was like music to my ears. Yes, please do boo the most effective lawmaker on your side. The individual who got through so many federal judicial appointments for Donald Trump, the individual who literally stole two Supreme Court seats. Am I happy that the Republican Party is turning on him because he supposedly turned on Donald Trump, even if he didn't vote to convict Donald Trump, even if he's already signaling support for Trump's 2024 run? Yes, I'm happy that they're turning on Mitch McConnell because if the Republican base doesn't like Mitch McConnell, then in a way that could stop Mitch McConnell's effectiveness. But who knows? Because Mitch McConnell, he's never really cared about like what public opinion thinks about him. I mean, if he did, then he would be less shameless in the way he is like destroying our country and perpetuating this late stage capitalist dystopian hellhole that we're living in currently. But uh, the fact that they're turning on Mitch McConnell, like they're they're cutting off their noses despite their faces. And I love it. This is a good thing. Now, I don't have any more clips to show you, but a couple of other moments that stood out to me is Donald Trump is taking credit for the COVID vaccine. And we know from reports that Donald Trump had no plan to distribute the vaccine, but now he is taking credit for it. Now, I don't necessarily care. Like Donald Trump is always going to be overly braggadocious about every single thing that he does when it comes to this lie because it has the potential to maybe create a positive outcome i'm not as mad about him taking credit for the covid vaccine i mean sure he can get some credit to an extent but to say that he gets full credit for getting americans vaccinated is is horseshit but if he is talking about the vaccine in a positive way if he's trying to take credit for the positive for the vaccine then this could have a positive effect on society because his conspiratorial supporters who think that the vaccine is a way for elites like bill gates to like microchip people if that gets them more likely to take the vaccine if this reduces vaccine hesitancy nationwide I'm going to support Donald Trump uh, taking uh, credit for it. He may be uh, wrong here to take credit for the vaccine when he didn't really do what's needed to get it distributed to Americans. But still, if he takes credit, maybe that will influence his supporters to want to get vaccinated. Uh, furthermore, he also took aim at trans people because, of course, if you are a Republican, you punch down. That's what you do. Um, you prop up elites and uh, the wealthy billionaire class and the millionaire class and you punch down at marginalized communities and what's funny is he echoed the same turf sentiment that we've seen from even uh democrats like tulsi gabbard who claim that trans women are ruining sports for cisgender women this is not some epidemic that's happening this is basically bathroom panic 2.0 it's a way to create hysteria, which ultimately drives hatred for transgender Americans. Trump said the same exact thing. Trump, who is not a feminist, mind you, is saying this, the same exact thing that TERFs are saying. So if you agreed with uh, Hillary Clinton or uh, Tulsi Gabbard here, if you took this anti-trans stance, you are now also in agreement with Donald Trump. So all of the shitty people uh, have the same stance when it comes to uh, trans issues. So don't be on the bad side of history here because you can tell that it's not going to go your way. Get on the right side of history and support trans people. Don't be duped by this non-issue related to trans and sports. But that is an entirely different subject. I just wanted to share some of what I think are the moments that aren't necessarily crazy. They just, um, they stood out to me. You know, uh, anything that Donald Trump says it doesn't really surprise me because I think like everyone, I've become desensitized. Uh, but one thing that is absolutely 100% crystal clear to me beyond a shadow of a doubt is Trump is still in control of the Republican Party. Um, this CPAC speech, it wasn't necessarily anything new for Donald Trump. It just kind of reaffirmed that what was obvious is, is still true. Uh, he's still in control. He's still the standard bearer for the Republican Party. And they absolutely love him and they don't just love him they worship him in some weird ways
tremendous, 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 tremendous,